then it will come on the youtube thing okay is it working now yeah it's working uh, are we ready rena can we start i think we are good to start mm. okay Can you hear my audio fine though? Like, there's no problem from my end. I'll be starting the video soon. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Charles Darwin rightly said, "It is not the strongest of all the species, or the fittest, or the most intelligent ones that survive, but the most responsible and the most adaptable to change." A very good evening to all watching this. I am Bria Narajan. and on behalf of the entire team organizing this webinar extend a warm welcome big and warm enough to encompass you all to our series boosting employment employability post covid this webinar is a part of our series gain momentum unlock your potential history has always proven us that the only constant in time is change and the phase we are in right now is awaiting a change Nevertheless humans have always and will always overcome the challenges set before it in all episodes our history book reminds us that it is not fear or anxiety that is going to drive us through this change but the power to adapt and to be responsive that is going to take us forward in this time of crisis and it is well known that the post covid phase our world is going to definitely face some changes small if not big and that would have an impact on our industry and employment definitely so to guide ourselves and to just get prepped for all these changes here is this webinar for us all with that being said i now request dr amaya kumar tripathi professor of computer department of don bosco institute of technology to kick start this webinar and introduce our speaker for today over to you sir yeah thank you brianna every recession has presented numerous challenges for every country making it it difficult for industries to survive and strive but they have also offered an era of opportunities for new age industries to sprout and save consumer behavior for decades the global recession induced by the covid-19 will fundamentally change the way humanity works and socializes for years to come the covid-19 crisis will be catalyst to the unprecedented change in every industry every industry will be forced to reform and restructure in order to transform into the new reality that will emerge three factors will lead to the transformation in every industry what that is agility which is planning and execution digital transformation which is product and service work from home culture which is a people and process while every industry must and will find ways to transform and there are the industries and sectors are well poised to leverage opportunities faster than the others to create larger employment opportunities and those are digital payments cloud computing contents means content generation wherein you will have a subscription service will become more promising with the possibility of having customized and targeted advertisement options and free ad content something like that there could be healthcare cyber security e-commerce online education insurance logistic robotics so like this way there are many sectors uh, wherein <coughs> this will continuously hire to for talent and become one of the largest source of employment just in post covid 19 is coming up there today we have renard disuza our own dbit alumnus is expert in this to have a discussion and as a webinar series in this <clears throat> today evening renard obtained his bachelor's of engineering in computer engineering in 2012 from university of mumbai and has since then working in the field of technology for over 5 years he also has done programs in the business analytics and consulting from george brown college toronto he has experience in implementing cloud tools creating ui other applications like a smart it logo analytics he has proven record of analyzing 
client needs and being able to effectively manage teams of bring those needs to a solution. He is a well versed in the financial sector, having worked on multiple big data projects and implementing architecture in real time. Renner is a is a digital business integration consultant with the Accenture and is excited to immerse himself into the world of technology. Prior to this, Renner had worked as a senior software engineer for Alent Infotech, located in Mumbai. He was also responsible for managing the team of engineers for POC development along with analyzing customer requirement to determine the product feasibility and creating POCs to suit their needs. Renner was also the manager for data analytics in the data engineering department of the Scotty Bank Digital Factory. He was responsible for major contribution on various projects involving real-time <coughs> ingestion of data and batch models. Later, he worked as a big data consultant to develop solutions towards big data framework and data science to run data analytics algorithm for recommendation systems. His professional experience has consisted of working in the private sector under multiple different titles. His work has allowed him to take part in the projects and lead team which have assisted client in solving multiple and technical issues. He is continuing at develop, to develop both his technical and business skills by diverting time to learning new development in various technologies, including Azure also. So today we have Renner and, uh, <clears throat> and I would like to welcome him. And the session is from Renner now. Renner. Uh, thank you so yes, much. Sir. Just before we head on to the crux of today's webinar, I would like to uh, make an announcement that our YouTube chat box is awaiting all of your questions. We'll be having a Q&A session with Mr. Rainer after his talk. So please post in your questions. Now let's move on to the talk by Mr. Rainer. Over thanks, you, Brianna. Uh, thanks, Amir, sir. I would like to thank uh, Imran, sir, Don Bosco, Amir, sir, and the entire faculty. In fact, I have been going to and fro with Deepthi, ma'am, to, to get the session started. So I would like to thank all of them to give me this opportunity. Um, uh, and to begin with, uh, what Amir, sir, said was uh, aptly put that uh, technology is important, technology is changing. And uh, when I was first approached uh, with this particular activity to talk to all of you regarding employment post-COVID, I, uh, my first uh, decision was not to talk about technology as such in the entire presentation. And I will be sharing my screen shortly. Uh, but uh, the, what I want to talk to you about is how to get a job in the market, what kind of jobs are there in the market, and how we can actually make sure that you get employed, if not now, in the near future. And what steps do you need? Maybe not now. Uh, maybe you have a job already, which is great because India does provide campus placements. It's, it's probably going to be a later call. But, uh, but what can you do to go ahead in your career? So all of that has been captured here. I'm definitely not going to talk about work from home culture, though I will share some experiences. The, frankly, because half of that is something that you can see nowadays in uh, TV shows that are happening in India where people are just like sitting at home and uh, doing their podcasts. So not wasting more time, I will start with my session. Let me know once you can see my screen. Um, uh, it's seen, it's visible. Sure, thank you. Um, so we are going to uh, do a recap of the current situation, what the world is going through, what uh, the global markets look like, and uh, is it something that we were expecting? That's what we are going to discuss. We will then go on to discuss the current job market, how to get a job, and then very important things to get a job are going to be not just how you get a job, but how you approach it. And for that, we'll discuss about your technology quotient and your mental health. And then I will tell you some stories of people who suffered during COVID in terms of either job loss, temporary layoffs, uh, some people who gave interviews. I will be sharing my personal experiences as well because uh, I went through a lot of stress initially uh, during this phase of COVID and, and it was job related. So I will be sharing that. And, and then towards the end, we'll have a quick Q&A session. Um, so going ahead, 
things could always be better or could be worse, said by Marla Gibbs. Marla Gibbs is well known for her uh, role in Jefferson. And what does she really mean by things could always be better or could be worse is we probably have already seen the worst in the past three months that has happened during this COVID uh, situation. Um, and to, to put it aptly, it, it has affected us more uh, from psychological point of view than from the health point of view. Uh, and frankly, because our incomes are affected, our regimes are affected, our social life is affected. But try and understand it is a pandemic. It is not the end of the world. And that's where you need to understand that you need to keep your mind and spirit uplifted. Get, getting a job and, and the whole uh, content of the series is about how to get a job. It's about having a sound mind and a good spirit because we can sense your energy. Even, even on a video call, if I'm going to take an interview for anyone on a video call, I can sense your energy. I can sense if you're depressed, if you're stressed, or even if you're bluffing. I, I mean, uh, if it's a poker game you're playing online, you can make out if you're bluffing, right? And, and, that, and this is pretty much it. But uh, did the world really stop? I mean, what, the lockdown lasted for three weeks, four weeks, maybe six weeks. But the world does not stop, right? Um, money went on to become the 11th richest man during this lockdown. And, and that is the, the truth. The world won't stop, and, and so you should, even you shouldn't stop. Um, so what, what is an economic slowdown? An economic slowdown or an economic, and why did I mention economic meltdown? So slowdown is something that was gradually approaching the markets. So if you look at Indian, Indian GDP, it was going down month by month. You can see that happening in 2019, 2018, uh, unemployment rates. It, it was, uh, it, the slowdown was coming. It was always there. But I mentioned it as a meltdown because as science students or, or as engineers, you know COVID acted as a catalyst. And, and by catalyst, it, it was that already the economies were on a slowdown. And when COVID hit, no one knew what to do. Companies did not know how to react. Countries did not know how to react. And it was chaos everywhere. Um, so, and, and there were mass layoffs as well in some countries. And, and in some cases, there were temporary layoffs. A lot of my friends were furloughed. And, and uh, the question then came up in a recent discussion that I was having, and I have these frequent discussions with industry people, is what has happened to the jobs that disappeared? Because if you look at January, there were probably 30, 40,000 jobs posted on LinkedIn or Indeed or, I don't know, uh, monster.com, nokri.com. And, and suddenly, there are a very few job openings out there. So what happened to the jobs that have disappeared? They are still there. The, like I told you, COVID acted like a catalyst. The jobs did not disappear permanently. They disappeared temporarily. And that is your main point, because when the markets open up, jobs are going to flood the market. And look at it positively, because when the market opens up, they are going to need people, and you are ready to be employed. So let's have a quick look at some numbers. I, and, I, and I'm not going to bore you with the numbers. Though I'm a data science guy, I, I know numbers can be boring. So let's have a look, quick look at the charts. Uh, so guess the graph one. And uh, I know like a lot of people are watching it on YouTube. But a quick question to those who can respond on, on the, the Zoom chat. Uh, any guesses on the first graph, what it can be? Um, so yeah, that's basically the Canadian GDP, and you can see a sharp downfall. But what is this graph? And, and you can see the, after the sharp, uh, sharp downfall, there's a sharp upwards curve. And that is uh, your employment ratio in Canada. The same with India. And the good part about India right now is that although it was a gradual slowdown, they did not go negative like other countries. Economy did not stop completely. And like I said, the numbers don't lie. Uh, you could, getting numbers for India is difficult. Like you could go to the NSSO site and things like that, but uh, getting numbers for India is uh, more difficult. I can't provide you with concrete employment and unemployment numbers. But if you look at these numbers, and, and this is basically the unemployment chart for India, 
you can see that April and May show a constant 23.5%. Now, when we talk about unemployment, India, uh, India I still consider, given its vast unskilled labor, I, I still consider uh, uh, unemployment at 23.5% during COVID to be good. And the fact that it did not get worse after April is also good. Uh, it only shows a sign that when things open up, it will reduce. So as technologists, as engineers, you should look at the market and you should be happy. Why Reliance Geo in India is doing, is one of the best uh, businesses right now. Microsoft is really good. Uh, Tesla, $1,000 a stock, man, that, that guy's minting money. Uh, so, uh, so is Microsoft. Uh, they all are doing great. Uber Eats, skip the dishes. I don't know. In India, I, I think you all have different options to order food, but uh, they are doing great. And and gaming market, I'm sure a lot of you guys have PS4s or, or a lot of you PUBG, and um, uh, gaming market is doing good. In fact, right now they are planning to launch the next Xbox and the next uh, uh, next gen PS5. And so temporary layoffs happen, but because the markets are growing, they're going to need people. Like Amazon is doing amazing business, but they need people for marketing. They need people for sales. And uh, I will come to where marketing and sales comes in. I will come there shortly, but uh, don't get worried when you see layoffs happening. Don't get worried when you see your people losing their jobs. It, it is a part of uh, depression. It is, a, it, is, it is a part of the great economic depression. It had happened 20, 30 years ago. India did not get affected. Probably if we ask our parents, they, they won't be able to relate to it. But if, uh, and when it comes to networking, I will talk about you trying to reach out to people overseas. Talk to them and you will see that this is not new. A lot of countries have gone through this great depression and they have come up again. And we will come up from this again. So current job market. Why did I talk about hiring freeze? Um, the current job market is more complex than it looks. Yes, there were good trends that Amel sir did mention. Subscription model is going up. Wood Select is out, I think, in India. They have some pretty good series. But basically, the market is changing very, very rapidly. Movies releasing on OTT and um, uh, on-demand platforms. Uh, and besides that, like I said, uh, technology stocks are surging. So what is this hiring freeze? Hiring freeze is something that a lot of uh, people who have job offers or who were looking for jobs are facing in organizations. And, and this is happening in every organization. A, a few of my clients right now have hiring freeze going on and, and that's completely normal. Uh, so uh, is hiring freeze a bad thing? Not really. Uh, because even as human beings, we need to pause and retrospect at times. You will meet people who take three months off their uh, work and, and go to Himalayas or wherever they want to, to retrospect. Same way with organizations, they are taking this uh, economic slowdown as, as not a financial loss, but as an opportunity to rest, retrospect, to see if their hiring was the right hiring, to see if the amount that they used to pay the employees is the right amount. And once the hiring freeze opens up, there will be a mass demand out in the market. Uh, also try and understand that uh, during this hiring freeze, companies still hire. Um, and what do I mean by companies still hire? Uh, the, the, so when I'm going to give my testimonials, I think that's when it's best uh, addressed. But you will still go through interviews during hiring freeze. You, you might still get a delayed offer during hiring freeze. And how to deal with these delays is something that we will discuss eventually. So I had sent in uh, two questions. And it's also time for my quick coffee refill. So um, I had sent in two questions. I don't know, Brianna or, or Tejaswani, who's handling that. Um, would you like to take that quick poll? And before you uh, post that poll on, on YouTube or, or um, on Zoom, I would uh, like to uh, ask those who are answering this poll that some of the options could be weird or hilarious. 
but answer what you truly feel is right. And, and and let's towards the end when we have the Q&A session, if we have the results available then, we'll quickly see how you do not think different than the others. You do not think different than your colleagues. And, and then we will go ahead with it. Uh, Brianna or Tejaswani, handing it over to you right here for two minutes. Uh, so we'll be posting these questions on the YouTube chat as well. But the question is, what type of work do you want to do? Is it a pure technology, pure engineering oriented one? Or is it a uh, business functions like sales, HR, risk, change management, etc.? Or is it going to be something uh, semi-technical like a business analyst or a project manager? Or kuch bhi chalega par job de do. Which of these would be your type of work? And uh, that's uh, don't you have the second question with you? Okay, oh, I'll read the second one also. So the second question is, what do you plan to do in your near future? The first option is, do you want to go for certifications or go for masters because everyone's doing it? Or four years are just so much. It's not going to happen with this. So the relevance of this these questions will come in later because I, I usually have a mentor and a career counselor. I go to him and, and discuss all of this. And, and the relevance of these questions is also going to come during the testimonials and the experiences that we discuss. Uh, but uh, going ahead, uh, let's, as and when you respond, let's quickly discuss the type of jobs that you will come across while searching. What do I mean by pure technology oriented jobs? These are hard, hardcore coders and, and those who don't even probably require Google to code. That's a very rare bit. But um, even I, I need Google to code. I, I would be honest, I'm not a good coder anymore. I used to be. Um, business analysts and project managers, I call business analysts and project managers, especially from the engineering background, as lazy engineers. I, I am one of them sometimes, depending on my project. Uh, because they are not fully technology oriented, they are not fully business oriented. They want to stay somewhere in between as a bridge, and uh, that helps. These are the guys that um, uh, basically Bill Gates spoke about when he said, you know, he'll hire a lazy person because you know how to get a thing done efficiently. That's where a project manager and a business analyst would add, honestly come in. Then managerials and executives. Uh, and freelancers. Why do I say freelancers are different than startups? Uh, primarily because, and, and if this was a one-to-one -one, uh, or a classroom session, this would be a question for you guys. But uh, going to the answer straight away, it's that managerial and executives is when you go up the order in an organization or you have a startup which employs other people and, and you are more responsible for the delivery of the content uh, or for the delivery of the product from start to end in various divisions. Freelancers are more about contractors who come in for a particular role. Uh, let's say I hire you to make, uh, uh, let's say I hire you to make an Android game. I, I've come across some of those ACM uh, Android games, and they're pretty good to be honest. Uh, so yeah, like I hire you to hire, make an Android game. Once the contract is done and dusted, you and I don't have any relationship. They are freelancers. What are skilled labors and what are unskilled labors? Skilled and unskilled labors are basically, uh, if you have a hobby, if you're good at carpentry, and, and I have met people who have diverted from the original field, but if you're good at cooking, you're good at carpentry, and, and you're so good that you could probably get a certification without having a degree and, and go ahead in that career without actually learning learning in it. And, and there are people who I have, who have come across from, let's say, investment banking background, but just because they are good in cooking, uh, they they or they just tried in a restaurant and and they have gone on to progress to be a chef. Uh, they are good at sales and and they say enough with network security. I want to do sales. Uh, so skill labors is is more of that. Uh, and why am I talking about these kind of jobs? Because all of you will probably start off in technology, but not all of you end up in technology. I can say in the past three weeks, I've come across TBIT alumni who are now either working in HR, who are working in finance, um, who 
or, or uh, let's say my engineering colleagues, some of them not from DBIT, who have gone ahead and are working as project managers. I myself work as a consultant, which is more of a business oriented role and technology oriented role. So I am one of the lazies. Um, and and some of them have even have their own startups. And, and uh, I remember a couple of months ago, one of my uh, colleagues from Don Bosco uh, also contacted me to ask if there are any freelancer roles. So you, throughout your career, are going to progress through these type of jobs. And, and that's where I, I am going to ask you to have an open mindset. Because looking at it, you, you should not look at a job as that, okay, I have been trained for a particular type of job. I've been trained to become a coder. I've been trained to become a UI expert. Does that mean my career is only going to be UI? No. Everyone wants a change in their career every three, five years. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. You like something new, you go ahead, take that responsibility. And your initiative to take a responsibility, even if it is not something related to your field, is appreciated by the industry. And that is what you need to keep in mind. So let's come to the main part. And, and that's why we all are here, right? Everyone wants to find a job. And uh, like uh, Milton Burley, who's basically a comedian, uh, he said that if opportunity does not knock, you build a door. And why am I here? I am here to teach you how to build a door. And, and this is probably the main part of the entire session. So there are three ways to make a door to get a job. Networking, innovation, and you need to stand out. So let's take this one by one. Networking. Uh, so networking, um, I had um, friends who came in uh, when, when I was in Canada. I was completely new, but I got my first job through networking. And then I had friends who came over later on to Canada, and, and they got their uh, jobs through networking. I had friends who went back to India, and they got their jobs via networking, not by applying online, not by uh, going and searching on monsterjob.com and... Uh, things like that, but they got it purely through networking. So what is networking? Networking is nothing but making friends or making meaningful connections in, uh, in, in the industry that can come in handy. And uh, in India, we do not emphasize networking as much because we are in our comfort zones. Trust me, like even when I was in India, I, I was like, Company nikal degi to ghar to hai, like mummy daddy ke pas jaunga. But, but that is not the case with the world out there. Networks are very, very important in your, and they act as a success factor. And what do I mean by meaningful connections? Some connections can be toxic, they can put you down. Some connections are constructive connections who will criticize you to make you uh, a better person. And that's about you recognizing what is right and what is wrong. Um, and how do you make a, a network or a, how do you make a connection? I assume all of you are on LinkedIn and, and I get connections from uh, fresh grads who, who, who just pass out from Don Bosco, or even not from Don Bosco, I do get it from other universities. Uh, they, they come and they send me a connection on LinkedIn. Now, there are people who will say, oh, but I don't know you. Why, why would you accept my connection? And that's where there's a term coined LION, LION which basically means LinkedIn Open Network. Not everyone adheres to the rules of LinkedIn Open Network, but I do. And there are a lot more people that I personally know who do. And it's a very, very big community, uh, which is basically about getting help and helping others. Uh, so go ahead. And first, identify your interest. Let's say you're trying to get a job in the insurance sector. Go ahead and connect with people from insurance and talk to them. And, and uh, there are posts uh, in social media. Go and comment on them. If someone criticizes, accept that criticism and learn to tell your story because, and I will come to that when I will uh, answer uh, questions related to, or I will rather go on the slide, what not to do while networking is people don't know how to tell their story to others. And uh, that's where we come to, do, uh, come to the point of what not to do while networking. The first point is don't follow up constantly. What do me, I mean by that? So I'll give you an example. 
uh, we had this one recruiter who got in touch with uh, 10 of us. Um, and uh, even as of now recently, there's one person who was giving an interview, got in touch with the recruiter. Follow up, if she says, you know, follow up next week, or if she says follow up in a couple of days, give it a week's time. Give, it, give, give her or him like five working days to get back to you or then follow up. Or, you know, uh, by constantly, we had this one person who sent one email every three hours or every four hours. Uh, do you have any updates on the job interview? Do you have any updates on the job interview? To a point where the, the recruiter or the HR stopped replying to the entire group. So what happened here is that person did not get the job. And the other people who probably had a 30 or a 40% chance to get a job, uh, she got so bugged with the entire group of students that, that she was like, I'm not even going to bother to respond to them. Okay. So try and, and hold up to that wherein you are following up, but, but not constantly. Never ask for a job. Okay. The ultimate of every uh, ultimate aim of this, this conversation, or even me, when I talk to anyone in the industry is getting a job, which either pays you more or, or getting a first job like you do. So what do I mean by never ask for a job? Because if you come and talk to me and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Can you refer me? Bro, I don't know you. Why should I refer you? Like, Mera naam kharab ho gaya to, kal tune kaam ne kya. and that is, the, that is the point. Like, I don't know you. We haven't formed a connection yet. So you never start by asking for a job. Don't be defensive towards criticism. What do I mean by don't be defensive towards criticism? Uh, I work in a multicultural environment. Uh, we have a lot of people from uh, the entire Asian community as well as the European community. But we Indians are very, very sensitive. Uh, so something goes wrong, we, we stand up with a stick ready to beat the other person if he criticizes us. And, um, and that is what we need to change. We, need, we don't need to be defensive towards criticism, but accept it. If someone says, hey, you're wrong, ask him why you're wrong, why am I wrong? And, and, and then try and understand, he might have a valid point, but if he doesn't, it's okay to be angry, like if he doesn't. But, but you know, it's necessary to give, you, give yourself that 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, because I see a lot of argument going on in social medias, a lot of discussions going around your point of views. Your point of view might be right, but your point of view might also be wrong. And acceptance of that fact will show your humility and humility is very important to get a job. Um, having have an icebreaker ready. And when I say don't start with, I have done engineering from DBIT because I have not just DBIT, I have people who, who connect with me uh, for references and they say, I have done uh, engineering from XYZ college. I have done engineering from XYZ university. And I'm like, okay, so like, DBIT is probably the best years you will have in all your life. I, I still miss DBIT a lot, to be honest. The, it's going to be the best years you have. But um, being uh, an engineer or being a uh, working employee, five years down the line, the experiences only matter to you. No, no one else cares where you have studied from. Everyone cares about what you have worked on. But, but never leave what you have learned behind. And that's why I'm always in touch with Don Bosco. Uh, never leave what you have learned behind. These experiences do matter. Uh, but never start, have an icebreaker ready. Like how many guys watch uh, Super Bowl or um, know about um, the mass singer or, or things like that? You know, if you're doing networking in India, how, how many people... Actually, like when you start off your discussions and say, hey, did you watch the United game last night? I'm a big Manchester United uh, fan. So it, it would uh, spur my interest. And, and then I'm like, yeah, it was good. Like, uh, and, and it's, it's a conversation starter. Have an icebreaker ready. And eventually the person would want to know you. If he wants to create a meaningful connection with you, he's eventually going to ask you, oh, are you an engineer? From where did you do your engineering? And that's where DBIT comes in. But please don't start off your conversations like, I am from Mumbai, I am from uh, XYZ Engineering College. 
uh, I am from XYZ University. No one cares in, in, in the industry. Everyone cares what you know, and uh, everyone cares about uh, how well you, you are to work with. Uh, innovation. Now, when I talk about innovation, I don't really need to talk to you guys about innovating. Um, engineering is all about innovation. But uh, this particular type of innovation is not related to technology. It is about approach. So it's, it's a rat race out there for one job, op for 10 job openings, how many people we have in our IT? Because I think the number of people have, has increased in the computers and the organization. But um, let's say it's a rat race out there. So you need to think out of the box to get the big break because among the millions of people, why would I even look at your resume? And uh, that's where your innovative thinking comes in. So I'll give you an example. And I think this happened a few years ago in New York where a pizza delivery guy put his resume, when he knew that, you know, there's a big lot of pizzas going to big corporate offices, he put his resume in uh, the pizza boxes. So, and, and the people were really, really impressed. And uh, so he was even called for an interview and I think he even eventually got a job. Does that mean I'm asking you to go out there and deliver pizza boxes? No, that, my point is think differently. What would catch my attention? Why would I respond on a LinkedIn uh, request? What makes you so special? Uh, if I'm not an LIO and enthusiast and I'm not going to agree to whatever you're saying, uh, what really makes it special? Uh, nothing, honestly, nothing. And that's where uh, innovation in terms of approach comes in. People have their video resumes uh, and people have their vid uh, resume websites. Uh, not just LinkedIn profiles, but resume websites where they try and nail down their extracurricular activities and use them as a selling point. But at the end of the day, ko beshna And uh, the way you sell matters. You need to be a good salesman for your own resume. Um, one of the approaches that I can think of, and, and probably um, one of my friends actually got a job that way, is. Um, Sending a direct email and don't everyone don't go about sending a direct email, but let's assume you you form a connection, but the connection is very, very prominent person getting a lot of requests on LinkedIn, but he is your connection. You can see his personal email ID or you know his work email ID. Try and send it at a meaningful time of the day, like at nine o'clock in the morning when he's checking his emails. Because that's the point of time I would probably go through all my emails and, and reading and it, it would catch my attention. And that's what I'm talking about innovate. But that does not mean that everyone goes about sending an email to Amir sir and everyone starts sending an email to Amir sir at one morning. That's not the approach. Uh, we, we start off with trying to understand the person because without the connection, it is a spam. If I don't have a connection with you and you send me an email, it's a spam. So again, communication, connection, innovation, networking. Uh, remember these points. <sighs> Standing out. So you can stand, and that's where my second polling question actually came in. Like, what, what is standing out? Um, so when it comes to recruitment, uh, a lot of HR people, like we engineers, really don't care where you have studied. We care about whether you can code, not code, and then that matters. And whether you know Python, PySpark, big data for me that matters and uh, how do i stand out you can either stand out with your experience if you have like a good six seven years experience with uh, good references you stand out via education and that's where a lot of you go to do masters and uh, you can stand out through certifications now this actually is a good time and and uh, because your social life is affected, you are at home. This is a good time to get yourself certified. This is a good time to get your code on GitHub and share it with the techn technology enthusiast. I'm sure a lot of you all are Android developers out there who have developed some sort of game for a uh, final year project or something like that. Share your code on GitHub, make it free source, may, go and take a review from a technological enthusiast. And, and, and let's see what he has to say about it. That's about creating a connection because he will correct you. He will know what effort you're ready to put in. He will be ready to vouch for you. 
when it comes to education i send it's a request please please don't run to do masters immediately because that's where you lose your selling point a lot of uh, people who do masters who don't have work experience are losing out on people who have work experience and are doing masters with the total number of jobs reducing you really want the edge and your edge is that i by with the masters degree i have improved my knowledge and i know how to work with you and that's where uh, education after working becomes a priority or after having some experience we can becomes a priority and certifications why did i keep certifications for last okay certifications are confusing confusing as hell and it's it's for some people it's a money making gimmick for some companies it's a money making gimmick uh the, and the question arises which certifications should you do for a more technology oriented answer you could always reach out to me and and i will give you that but to for a more logical answer uh, you need to know what trends are going in the market you need to know and according to the trends you need to make yourself future proof certification is not about what you are doing right now it is about making yourself future proof and um, th that's why companies redo their certifications in every 3 years uh some of the certifications i am personally pursuing at this point of time is um, azure certified solution architect is is what i am studying for right now uh, but never give up on certifications keep doing that i know they are irritating i know they are frustrating you don't get dumps for every certification so those people who have cleared uh, rad db2 oracle dumps do not come in real life certifications if you are planning to do things like togaf aws ncp um, so it's a good for, and for that you need to read and that comes to our next point uh, mental health and technology quotient uh, so uh, glen close i am not sure how many people remember 101 dalmatian she was one of the villains who in, in that movie the old one and she said it was more mental health needs is more sunlight more candor and more unashamed conversations and uh, that's where we come into the next step of once you get your foot into the door or once you have created a door and you're knocking at it how to how to set yourself into the organization uh, or how to clear that interview a clear and healthy mindset is the first step of finding a job or clearing an interview why do i i say so uh, because there are times when you when you are not clear uh, and and then the conversation gets confusing the conversation might take a wrong turn and your interview goes for a toss and that's not because you didn't have the knowledge to clear the interview that's only because you didn't have a good night's sleep you you didn't you are probably going through relationship crisis or you are going through depression or stress or you don't have a healthy mindset conversations don't harm and not as asking for help um by what do i mean by that um, a friend recently was giving his ilts exam and uh, he came up to me and said hey i i did not get good scores and i'm like why didn't I, why didn't you come and talk to me before the exam and, and a lot of people do come and talk to me about that as well but i told him that look a conversation does not harm and and if you are asked for help i would have probably helped you prepare for for the exam uh, don't be ashamed about asking for help and uh, a lot of us are but it's it's not a good thing to have and being without a job causes vulnerability and it's okay to be vulnerable uh, but it's not okay to be expert vulnerability is one thing everyone is vulnerable i am vulnerable if i'm a i'm going to lose if i if i know i'm going to lose my job it's it's a very very stressful time and and if i lose my job that's that's a totally different uh, level of stress and depression so i understand what a lot of you fresh grads are going through it's okay to be vulnerable but don't let anyone in the industry exploit this vulnerability and and call out for help if anyone is doing that and and it's okay to call out for help uh, uh, and uh, like i said in my earlier point asking for help is not wrong and um, 
expose that vulnerability to the people because when you do so and there are posts out there i can share on linkedin where people have shared you know i have lost my job i can't meet my rent i i can't pay my bills uh, and and hrs have gotten back to them and i'm like and they're like okay we don't have a job for you that that meets your requirement but probably we can get you into a call center or we can get you a, a, a job that helps you meet your bills and that matters it's okay to expose your vulnerability but don't let anyone exploit it so depression and stress are very much real and it's here to stay and and i am talking from personal experience i was jobless for a while and depression and stress are very very real i have gone through it and they are always going to be there you it's it's you're not going to escape it uh, personal loss job loss lack of money i can give you a thousand reasons it's always going to be there but we need to learn how to deal with it simple yoga i don't know today was uh, international yoga day i think but a simple yoga meditation conversations asking for help these are the ways to get your mental health in the right place and now comes the technical question so as an engineer you are expected to have a high tq and uh, I, and i think that comes as a norm because if you don't then you have probably selected that you want to do uh, hr business or risk and why do i say you need a high tq uh, because uh, you don't need to know everything but you expect to know about everything you are expected to know about everything so i was giving uh, a job uh, interview related to insurance um, Three four weeks back, and uh, because I knew it was insurance, I didn't know uh, who was the client. I knew that they were going to take an interview. My first job was to read, and that's why I said it can be very boring. But my first job was to read about the current in, uh, insurance trends, what particular technologies are used for reporting, what is let's say IFRS, which is an insurance standard, and and things like that. So. again this ties back to networking because if you are an enthusiast about if you're talking to an enthusiast about aviation then it's necessary for you to know about the jargons related to that industry uh, it, it it's not just related to like it and computers and quantum computing uh, big data data science no it's 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 not related to that it could be as good as knowing that which company is doing good uh, in stock market Uh, because that could be a conversation starter it, it uh, yes I, I, it, it is about linking your thought process with a person who is technology uh, sound in a technological way like who knows about his technologies who know what is evolving around him and if you don't keep up it is dangerous what do i mean by dangerous um, a, uh, a year back i was giving an interview and and uh, i keep giving interviews and and it's a good practice you you guys should, once you get your necessary experience you should keep that as well um, i was giving the smock interview actually and and then the question came in what is kafka i have done some pretty big uh, internet of uh, things projects or iot projects on kafka but the question came is what is kafka and i i answered out of my experience what kafka was and and then they are like do you know k sql and i'm like what do you like you know kafka but you don't know ksql and you know what was my fault i did not read and go i did not read what is new in that particular sector of real time streaming what is pubs up what what are the alternatives for kafka i did not read i was over confident i was confident that what i have learned is enough and what you have learned is never enough always remember what you have learned is never going to be enough what you have learned is probably what you will never use there's something out there which you might never use uh, so try and learn about these different jobs jargons related to those particular jobs industries that you are trying to give an interview for and uh, knowing about that industry because knowing those particular jargons you are going to clear the technical interview in a jiff like they know that okay this guy knows this stuff he is going to learn the rest of it and now let's come to experiences so i have captured experiences from various people a lot of them don't want to be mentioned here but uh, so this is from uh, 
the point of view of a sales rep who's also a very good friend of mine she said that it's very difficult to start life all over again and causes depression and stress no matter how much you smile before or after you get a job keep asking yourself if you're happy and if you aren't work on it rather than living with an empty feeling and what does that mean it it comes back to this person was an hr uh, who was a consultant who studied sports and event marketing because was interested in sports and events and because there are very few jobs in that industry ended up as a sales rep and the question that she asked for herself is that she is she happy with the job and that was yes and this happened in a span of 4 years i'm talking about you changing your industry in 5 years this happened in a span of 4 years let's go to the next one experiences of a project manager and this is like a very very close friend of mine okay like he he's as good as my brother he said um, that in january he was promised a full time job he got uh, married he got into a bigger house uh, pays more rent because he knows he has job security and suddenly the hiring freeze came in due to covid he realized at that point of time that everything that his bosses had promised was not kept was, and and he's like uh, he did not know what was happening and and that's when you come to a realization that downfalls happens in your life and and to some extent you guys should feel lucky that a downfall has come in your life early on rather than at a point where um, it could be as big as losing a house um, not paying a bill Uh, uh, getting your credit score affected that all is not happening to you um, but he has learned to stay positive meditate look for jobs and he has already given interviews though no success till now but all the interviews during the hiring freeze have come in through the network so that's where networking comes into play and now comes the experiences of an engineer and and this was a very deep conversation that i had with someone and uh, what the person basically said is does it really matter if you are a top performer or uh, does it matter uh, about who you know because you could put in all your effort and not get an award or not get the necessary recognition but a mediocre person is probably going to be recognized in every meeting and that's only because of the people he knows but does that that mean that you don't really be a performer no you should be a performer because performer is the right way to go up the ladder but it also means you should be fun to work with and uh, another example that i can give is about myself when uh, when i cleared an interview 4 uh, years back and uh, i asked my colleagues that why did they choose me over a more qualified person because they, i was sitting against a person who was we had done masters in ai and things like that i'm like why me and they said we have worked with you in the projects before and we know we can work with you it's not about the technology you learn the technology but if i can't work with you i can't go out with you after work, after work for a drink uh, or uh, if i can't talk to you freely about myself in the eight hours that i sit with you and work i am not going to achieve my deliverables and and that's where you need to be open you, you it's good to stand out what like i mentioned it's good to stand out with your performances with your certifications with your masters but it's also sometimes good to stand with your team or with your colleagues because that really matters on the long run because tomorrow if there's an opening i would always recommend a person i like working with versus a person who has more experience because i know Uh, if i'm with the person whom i like working with i'm going to get my deliverables done either way and that brings us to the final part about q and a and uh, now i hand over the conversation to uh, briana tejaswini like whoever wants to take over uh, yeah so we head on to the q and a session uh, one of the questions that we got is what do you think would be the next blooming field in the world of computers post covid everyone says ai everyone says data engineering um, i feel um, uh, the post covid uh, the biggest change is going to be uh, in the field of uh, data science related to 
uh, consumers because right now the biggest impact that happened was on uh, consumer spending index. People are not ready to spend and that causes a direct effect on economy. And um, a lot of things have gone online. So digital sales is one. Uh, data engineering, uh, trying to learn the data patterns is another. Uh, reporting is going stronger. So they are not big jobs, they are small jobs. There, there are, of course, bigger AI-oriented jobs, but I am talking because you guys are freshers. Uh, reporting is, is going to be a big thing uh, because industries are, cra- are, we are constantly crammed with reporting needs and we need people who, need, uh, who know reporting tools. So that is another big thing that's happening out there. And uh, so I see as a technology from, from technology point of view, if you know Spark and PySpark, that's going to be a big thing. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Now the quest, next question is a little bit um, by a person whom we, uh, many of our students can relate to. To a person who is depressed and unhappy of having wasted most of their quarantine time, and is unable to focus, what would be your suggestion? I know most of you have answered, but then uh, just uh, for your personal, for, uh, could you share your personal experience? Uh, it's a very, very good question. Uh, so wasted most of your time. I am on the same page. Uh, I, I have wasted all my time, uh, honestly. Like the first three months, I, I do, uh, first two months, I think I didn't even step out of the house. I, I have a grocery store right below my building. I, I didn't really step out of the house, so I completely understand wasting time. I'm on my Xbox all the time, uh, but it's okay. It's 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 a realization, and the fact that you realize that you wasted time, and the fact that I realize I wasted time is a start. And the moment that realization happens, don't let it go away. You start asking yourself, okay, I know that I have wasted my time, but but it's not all gone and lost. There is still more time left, and how can you improve on it? I started improving by purchasing programs, which I already knew and were on discount on Udemy. I I, am not in any way encouraging you to spend money on Udemy. There are a lot of YouTube courses. Uh, But, you know, I I started spending time talking to people now. I spend more time uh, working out. I spend more time going through those programs and and upskilling myself. So, So it's good that you realize that you're depressed and stressed. Start having conversations with people in industry, like I said. Uh, reach out to me if you want to. And uh, from there, we can see, you know, like if a certification is going to help you or what can help you, we can always see. Uh, thank you so much. The next question is, what advice would you give the future pirates in your field? In my field? Yeah. Uh, good, good question. In my field, uh, so the, my field is evolving very rapidly. Uh, I say this because uh, a year and a half ago, someone told me I should learn Scala. I did not bother learning Scala, but uh, it could have been a big mistake. But luckily, things moved on to Python. So uh, be ready for change is one thing because as humans, uh, we are always against change, and and it's normal because we don't like change. So in my field, you should always be ready for change in terms of technology. You should always be ready for change in terms of uh, stress levels and deliverables. Because just because one organization is trying to pursue something, all the organizations will try to pursue the same. And that's why jumping between organizations has become common. Oh, the person in this bank has uh, experience in XYZ technology and we need a person. And it's a constant cycle. So uh, stay stay aware, stay updated, and be ready for change is, is what I would say. And uh, if you are referring to my particular field, two technologies to start with would, would be uh, in AWS, you start with Databricks and uh, uh, implementation of PySpark if you want to learn technology. Okay, thank you so much, Reina. That marks the end of our Q&A session. I now request Professor Dipti Jadav to propose the word of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, I, have, I have one question. Renner. Yes, sir. I have a small question uh, with respect to uh, education sector, right? So as you know yes. that when everything is changing, so exactly we have also so-called online education and which is also uh, you know, going to affect by post-COVID-19, right? 
and uh, this impact we also seen from preschool to higher education and uh, like offering flexibility of learning to students and uh, flexibility of teaching up to teachers also so uh, in that case do you think that from the cost of education will become cheaper and accessible to the larger section of society uh so it would depend on the level of education i, I was recently talking to a professor who teaches uh, and he is also one of my connections like i said he teaches aeronautical physics uh, in university of toronto and he teaches phd students um so i was talking to him recently about this and uh, he said that the cost would probably go up depending on the type of education you are referring to uh primarily because if you are going to be learning um Uh, let's say uh, it's going to be a smaller group sessions hmm. uh, rather than 50 60 students in a class that means the teacher needs to put in more efforts and uh, if, and over year it's hourly payments but in india it's a salaried structure hmm. uh, so depending if you have if it's more hours teachers are going to demand more salary more work life balance and uh, that means more assignments for students hmm. uh, so it all comes down to the type of education you are trying to deal with i don't see the cost coming down uh, immediately uh, in fact uh, some of the canadian schools have actually increased their fees and uh, although they are going to be studying from home and and this is the trend that i am seeing right now okay all right thank you very much mm-hmm. briana over to you uh, i now request professor dipti jadhav to propose the vote of thanks yes priyana I'm honored to propose vote of thanks. Gain momentum, unlock your potential has turned out to be a very successful webinar series, and no doubt this webinar is also one of them. I thank Mr. Renat Isuza for sharing his rich experience and precious knowledge with us. I'm sure the students have got new insights for their career and coping with stress during COVID pandemic. I wish to express my deepest gratitude to our principal, Dr. Prasanna Nambia, for inspiring us, the students as well as the faculty at the institute to evolve constantly. I am very grateful to our HOD, Ms. Sana Sheikh, for giving us opportunity to organize this webinar. I would like to thank Dr. Amya Tripathi for his. thought provoking address i thank dr firoz sheikh for being involved at every stage of planning and execution of this event i also like to extend a special thank to dean administrator mr imran ali mirza for his constant support and guidance this event wouldn't have been successful without the students in the organizing committee Thank you very much guys for your efforts. I also thank the faculty coordinator Ms. Shanila Mulla and team. A program becomes successful only due to teamwork. A huge thanks to the faculty members and the students of the computer department of the teamwork. I thank all for your cordial cooperation. And last but not the least I would like to express my thanks to all participants for attending this webinar. You have been a great audience. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so ma'am. Uh, uh, thanks, ma'am. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk. Um, and uh, one more thing that I would like to add is whatever I am today is it's frankly because of God's grace. parents blessings and also because of what experience i have learned from dbit uh, that will never go away and if any day uh, dbit does need me i will be available and and the same should be for students over here thank you anna thank you thank you so thank much, you so much. thank you so much dipti ma'am for that wonderful word of thanks on behalf of all thanks. the students who are viewing this i would say that rena it was a beautiful session but what made it so very special is that most of us or i would say all of us could relate to it thank you so much for reena for delivering this beautiful session and till You're the welcome. next time we'll meet with another beautiful opportunity to learn and to flourish our knowledge this is briana rajan signing off thank you thank you thank you